As the Supreme Court investigates that leak of a draft opinion which could overturn Roe v. Wade, law clerks at the court are seeking legal advice. And a man with a gun is arrested in front of Justice Kavanaugh's home. Joining me to discuss this and much more is president of the Judicial Crisis Network, former Supreme Court, court law clerk to Justice Clarence Thomas, Carrie Severino. Carrie, thanks for being here. I want to begin with this NPR report that came out Wednesday describing the mood inside the Supreme Court. Uh, they claim it's ugly and seething with resentment since the leak of that draft opinion. What have you heard? Uh, you know, I, I have not talked to clerks who are working in the building right now, but I just knowing what it's like anyway during this time of year, which is really crunch time. You've had all these arguments all year. Right. There's still cases. There's still a case that left from November that hasn't come out yet. It's really busy. And then you add on top of it, not just the focus and the public focus in the court because of the big cases, uh, but the fact that you don't know who you can trust anymore. That is a huge uh, right. problem. And then now you have the process of this investigation trying to find out who it is. I think, honestly, the, the leaker should, for the sake of his own, his or her own colleagues amongst the clerks and the justices, just out themselves because it's, it, you know, it's really undermining the efficiency of the court. They have way more cases to finish up by the end of this term, which is supposed to end June 27th. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any way they can do it, especially in this environment of distrust wow. and not knowing, uh, you know, which one among us is the person who uh, actually leaked this thing. Yeah, it's like the Agatha Christie novel at the Supreme Court. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts, uh, relating to that, he called the leak a betrayal. He ordered the Supreme Court marshal to uh, conduct an internal investigation. Now, according to that NPR report, that investigation may be adding to the tension at the court. Here's my first question. Is the marshal of the court competent to investigate something like this, in your opinion, Carrie? Well, you know, the marshal normally has a very different type of job. Normally, the marshals, they're dealing right. with building security. Uh, the marshal is, she's the one who, who yells, oye, 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 at the beginning of the Supreme Court <laughs> hearings. She also, you know, they deal with some of the personal security of the justices, which obviously has had to be dramatically ramped up at this point. But it's it's more of a, a secret service than an FBI, right? It, it, they normally are doing with security, not with investigations. I'm, I hope they're, they have the resources. They certainly don't normally have this kind of experience, but I would hope that no. uh, the, the marshals involved are up to the task. I was encouraged to hear that people are being asked for their cell phone records and affidavits of some sort. I'm not sure if it's affidavits saying, these are the people I've called, this is an accurate cell phone record, or I would say just ask them straight up, did you have anything to do with this leak, yes or no? Because also, you know, I think that'd be helpful to remove the cloud of suspicion. Everyone in this clerk class has basically people looking at them going, was it you? Was it you? I'd want to be able to, to sign on the line, swear under penalty of perjury. I had nothing to do with it. Please, you know, don't implicate me in this. Um, but I, I, I definitely, you know, I'm, I'm discouraged. We haven't heard yet who this person is. It's a small universe. Right. It, you're right. It's like Agatha Christie, and you're all locked in this one mansion, and someone did it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> You've right. One of them did it. Or maybe more. Uh, to the win in, in July. Right. Justice Thomas said when you lose the trust of colleagues, it fundamentally changes the institution. Has it? I, you know, I, I, I think Justice Thomas knows better than we do. Right. If he's saying that, I think that that's a real tell that there's there is some very serious lack of trust going on right now. I, you know, I, I, whether whether the liberal colleagues are supporting their clerks who are, you know, trying to find legal counsel and, uh, you know, not wanting to participate in this mm -hmm. investigation or not, I, I don't know. Uh, but I think it's it's a real problem for the functioning of the court as a whole. I would have hoped, you know, we've seen several justices, including Justice Thomas, the chief justice, speak out about how outrageous this leak is. I'm sorry we haven't heard from someone like, you know, Justice Breyer, who is, a, is an institutionalist in many ways, right. or Justices Sotomayor or Kagan. I think it needs to be clear that the person who did this is not welcome, regardless of, of which side of the aisle they came from. And uh, it doesn't, whatever they, they, their motives mm -hmm. uh, may have been, this was, this was, something that has did a lot of damage to the court, and as we're now seeing, has put a lot of the justices in real personal danger. Right. Yeah, what do you make of this NPR story? I mean, it came from Nina, Nina Totenberg, we should say, which, you know, she comes with her own baggage and her own leak issues. Um, 
Is this a way to try to make this investigation disappear or put pressure on the chief justice to sort of back away from the interrogation that is apparently underway in the Supreme Court? Yeah, I worry that the slow pace of the investigation might have something to do with people worrying about stories like this, worrying that, oh, my gosh, now you're going to have clerks mm. saying they're being scrutinized, raising Fourth Amendment search and seizure issues, raising their Fifth Amendment right to not testify against right. themselves. Uh, you know, they should be abiding by those amendments. But we're in a situation where these are employees of the court. They are effectively at will employees. And I think if you had the justices saying, hey, I don't want anyone in my chambers who's not willing to sign an affidavit, and uh, you're gone tomorrow if you won't. I think that would that would facilitate things. I do think it seems like it's trying to make the clerks the victims somehow. When I, and, and for all I know, all but one of those clerks mm -hmm. is. But there's someone in that building who has mm -hmm. committed a, a grave injustice against their fellow colleagues, his uh, clerks, certainly against their boss, the other justices, and the country really in throwing the court into this into the middle of this political uh, juggernaut. Yeah. Well, while the leak itself may not be an actual crime, CNN reported last week that clerks have been asked to turn over, as you mentioned, their cell phone data, sign sworn affidavits in which lying would place them in legal jeopardy. Now, clerks are reportedly terrified and not really working with one another as they have in the past due to this, this fear and the tension and insecurity there. Uh, as a former clerk, how do you think this will affect the workings of the Supreme Court, particularly, as you said, during crunch time? This is when they've got to get these these uh, decisions out and they have to do it expeditiously. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I were clerking right now, I, I would I would retreat much more to my own silo of I'm just talking to my my co-clerks within that one chambers and not wanting to talk to a lot of other chambers. But look, at, at the end of the day, it's the justices who have to come to a conclusion on how they want to word each different case, et cetera. It seems to me. Um, you know, that, that the, the, the judge, the clerk spending so much time looking for outside counsel, trying to figure out some way not to let let the off the clerks know if if they call Josh Gerstein at Politico. You know, I would I, I would just think the fastest way to do this is to say, yes, I'm going to sign this. I I, I personally, uh, you know, I, I, I understand concerns about not wanting to hand your phone to someone. But it sounds like what they're asking for is just I need I need a list of your calls. I think that's much more defensible given the context of what's going on here. And, you know, I, I think they should be able to get yeah. stuff done uh, faster than they're doing it now. I, I want to move on to a related story. It's a terrible one. A man with a gun was arrested by police on Wednesday near the home of uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. After making threats against the Supreme Court justice, there have been protests outside the justices' homes and threats of more protests to come, with people claiming this is their First Amendment right in action. In light of what's happened this week, Kerry, shouldn't the law be enforced here and these protests and certainly threats against justices at their home, this shouldn't be happening. It's against the law. Yeah, because there are laws that, that say you can't intimidate a judge, not just a Supreme Court justice, but any judge. We don't want judges who are making the decisions because they're frightened of what will happen to them or their families if they rule one way. We want them making their decisions based on the law. That is the rule of law, and that's how we have, that's our American system, that's the strength of our system. So, well, mm -hmm. they obviously have a First Amendment right. And, and boy, I can't count the time, number of times I've marched on the Supreme Court myself at the March for Life, you know, protesting a decision, but it's different when you're going to someone's home, especially you think of several of these justices, Justice Barrett, Justice Kavanaugh, who have children, and you're, you're putting their families at risk, because even if every one of these protesters who is part of this organized protest is uh, peaceful, ultimately, even, even if they are shouting vile things on megaphones, et cetera, but they're not out to physically harm someone, They've doxed these justices. Their addresses are now out there. Their cameras going up and down their street. Now the the deranged person, like the man arrested at Kavanaugh's house, has a clear path. He said he found the address on the internet. How? Because people are arranging protests at their houses. And so I think they should be enforcing mm -hmm. those federal laws already on the books that are supposed to protect justices from this type of activity and leave it. Leave those. First Amendment concerns, absolutely, but the First Amendment does have limits in terms of making sure that safety is is uh, protected, just like you can't run up right up to the right. president because they're worried that someone's going to attack him. There was someone just today who had to be uh, taken away from a motorcade because they're protesting by the president's car. You, you have to have limits that protect I the safety of our public officials at the same time, allowing protest in, in other venues.
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show that video here because uh, it, it's illustrative of the snap an important protection of the president that happens. Now, this is just a woman with a bullhorn on a street in L.A. Uh, the, the other situation are people actually patrolling your house, trying to uh, inflict harm upon you because you might rule a certain way in a, in a, uh, a, a Supreme Court ruling. This is madness. They have to protect these justices. Now, Kerry, the Senate unanimously passed a bipartisan bill last month, co-sponsored by Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas and Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, which would extend protections to Supreme Court police to immediate family members and the justices. Now, after the arrest near Kavanaugh's home, Senator Mitch McConnell had this message for House Democrats. This is exactly, exactly why the Senate passed legislation very shortly after the leak to enhance the police protection for justices and their families. This is common sense, non-controversial legislation that passed in this chamber, in this chamber unanimously. But House Democrats have spent weeks blocking the House's Democrats have refused to take it up. Now, look, Mr. President, that needs to change, and it needs to change right now. Right now. House Democrats must pass this bill, and they need to do it today. Now, Kerry, White House Press Secretary uh, Karine Jean-Pierre came out, and she said that the president condemned the actions of this individual in the strongest terms and that, quote, any attempts at violence or attempts to intimidate justices have no place in society. However, the president himself did not come out and condemn the threat to Democratic law, and Democratic lawmakers have been awfully quiet. Why do you think that is, and will this bill pass? Yeah, it's very discouraging because I would say that the protests at the homes are per se intimidation. They're very intimidating and saying, we know where you live. And the mm -hmm. president has refused to condemn those protests. And in fact, Jen Psaki, his previous press secretary, was very encouraging of them, talking them, oh, they're very passionate and they're peaceful and we encourage peaceful protests. Um, that, that, that needs to change. I think the president should be putting pressure. He's got a lot of Democratic senator colleagues who have, have obviously passed this legislation why are the House Democrats holding it up? Ultimately, I think the why has to go with the fact that this administration has consistently been more responsive to the radical, deep pockets of the dark money left than they are to even the average Democrat voter. Even before this incident in front of Kavanaugh's house, most Democrats agreed that you shouldn't be protesting justices' houses, that you should be protesting in front of the Supreme Court when you have a concern about the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That's, so they're not even responding to what most mm -hmm. Democrats want, want. They're responding to the radical voices um, that have way too much sway with this administration. Mm. Kerry, why the delay in releasing this Dobbs decision? Wouldn't it be better to get it out there and move on? It seems by staggering the delay, you're only increasing the political tension and causing more of these uh, threats against justices as well as protests. Yeah, now remember, if there hadn't been a leak, no one would be surprised that the decision wasn't out yet. Typically, the decision that is the, the most controversial decisions take the longest because to get it out, you need all the justices in the majority yeah. to agree on the exact wording of how they're going to phrase this opinion. All of the justices who have written their dissents and their concurrences to all agree who's signing on to what and exactly how that's written. It does take time. However, in light of the fact that we have this unprecedented leak of an entire draft opinion, I think the court should have moved quickly and I, more quickly, and I think they should move more quickly now to say, you know what, we need to put this top line. We need to make this before we do any other work on the almost 30 other cases they have. We need to get this case out. We know they're able to do it. In, in the fall, remember, they heard the Texas heartbeat bill case. That came out in 50 days, which frankly is a millisecond in Supreme Court time. This case was argued in December. They could, I think, put the pressure on to move faster. I hope it's not that the, some of the uh, justices who are writing dissents and some of the, on the other side in this case are refusing to be finished with it. I would say the chief justice should just say, you know what, if the majority is ready, we're putting their opinion out there, let's finalize this thing, let's, let's stop the risk that someone thinks they can change the result 
by assassination. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. And let's, uh, if we need to issue the concurrences, the dissents later when they're ready, you'll, you'll hear them, you'll get them in later June, you'll get them in July, but let's get this opinion out now to take the pressure and the threat off of our justices. I wish you were the Chief Justice, Carrie. Carrie Severino of the Judicial Crisis Network, thank you for being here. Thanks, Randy.